What is the world's most evil company and why? Story 1 Nestle is pretty bad, charging African villages for water. The far worse thing that they did was give milk formula to poor African women for free just long enough for them to stop producing milk and then start charging them for the formula, tricking them into giving up something they produce naturally and then charging them to save their babies. Story 2 Facebook they knowingly created an algorithm that boosted content with angry reactions, which in turn disseminated misinformation that has cost lives and created divisions between people, our friends, and family. Whatever controversial view Uncle Bob held is being shoved right in our faces. They have perpetuated the process of dividing us between young and old, rich and poor, black and white, left and right, liberal and conservative. And they did it all because more clicks, e more money in their pockets. Facebook. Story 3. I don't like Manulife Financial after I spent a few months being a pregnancy relief receptionist at death and disability claims in the 90s. It was not good. Everything you might suspect about insurance is true. It's ugly and vile and inhuman and absurd. When I left, it was before my contract was up with a stolen file and with a threat to the manager that if this dude, whose file I'd pilfered, didn't call me with the news money, was in his account by 7 p.m., I'd take all of this shit to the media. John, I'll always remember you. The accident that destroyed your wrist in the mine, the one that was covered, the helicopter ride to the local major metropolitan hospital to fix it, the car accident with a moose two months later that bent the metal pins to a 90-degree angle, and the fact MF said they wouldn't cover this new helicopter ride because they'd already paid for a helicopter ride? The part where we forced you to prove you were disabled every month for 75's a pop until we changed the number on the form and didn't let you know? And you called, a 55 years old minor weeping because his 16YO daughter stopped eating lunch and you didn't have another $75? You'd filled out the form we sent you but it was wrong before it arrived. So you called and said you were headed out to the wood shack and would just take the hand off at the wrist. So I did what I did. And you had the disability payment you had bought and were owed by the time we spoke that evening. I never went back. And when my placement agency called and tried to upbraid me for unprofessional behavior, I told them to never ever send me to a company that was actively ripping off and trying to kill their clients. Story 4. The three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Your ability to get loans for cars, houses, etc. depends on your credit history they collect, but they are notorious for having mistakes as a result of fraud or otherwise, and customer service that's so terrible that it is sometimes impossible to correct mistakes in your credit history record. Plus, in 2017, Equifax had a personal information data breach that included social security numbers and is the reason it's recommended that you get your credit history frozen. Now, if you want to apply for a loan, you have to go through the hassle of unfreezing your credit history first at all three credit bureaus. At one time, they charged you to do this. I'm not sure if it's true, but I heard that each company has stakes in the other two, so they were are basically trying to financially benefit from the data breach. I don't use the word hate very much, but... Story 5, so like all you guys are going on about Nestle, but have you ever heard about Cargill? Cargill makes Nestle look like a good guy in comparison. This company has the power to single-handedly eradicate hunger and deforestation, but chooses not to, so that food is a scarce commodity, making it a marketable object. They also control, are directly involved in something like 90% of every agricultural good you interact with daily. Clothes on your back, food for breakfast, lunch, dinner, blankets you keep yourself warm with, etc. Story 6 any of the privately owned prisons in the U.S. The problem is the prison industrial complex, which is different from private prisons which are also bad. The prison industrial complex is the sale of prison slave labor to for-profit companies. Basically, every government-owned prison does this. Often it can include for-profit companies that are then contracted to provide goods or services to the prison they purchase the labor from, meaning the for-profit company is making a bank selling the prison the product of its own prisoners gives labor at a very marked up price. Often these companies even take a portion of the joke of a wage made for things like transporting them to go provide labor. It's an intentional muddying of the issue by the government, so things like Biden's abolishing federal private prisons seems like big prison reform, while it actually changes nothing about the bigger issue of corruption.
Also, it's in no way just these specialized prison companies. Since the pandemic, a ton of Fortune 500 companies have decided to turn to American labor rather than bother replacing workers quitting overpay because they get to pay significantly under minimum wage, qualify for government assistance in many states, for workers with zero agency in work conditions. Story 7 Walmart they drove down prices their suppliers could charge them, and this resulted in poorer quality items. Pretty sure it's harmful to the suppliers as well. They are a welfare company, drive out all other businesses, so people work there. Pay non-livable wages, so workers have to survive on food stamps, which the employee then uses at Walmart. Disgusting cycle, honestly shocked this isn't higher on the list. They monopolize areas and, as others have mentioned, cause small businesses to close down, it destroys little towns, and it is devastating to many people. The work culture is depressing as well, and you're constantly going, replenishing stock, helping customers, being cross-trained to work other departments and registers, which causes disruption of workflow and confusion towards responsibilities. I had worked there and very, very rarely go there anymore. Story 8, I can't pick so here are the four companies that I think are the worst Facebook, Nestle, Ford and Volkswagen Facebook due to manipulation, tracking and invasion of privacy. Nestle because everyone knows access to water isn't a human right. Ford because of the Pinto mentality, basically they are willing to sell cars with known fatal safety issues as long as the lawsuits are cheaper than changing the actual thing wrong with the car that will kill people in accidents. This is still prevalent today, 2015, European market Mustangs got two stars in Euron cap because Ford didn't think they would test the Mustang, so Ford cheaped out on things like the rear seat belt assembly. After they got caught, they promised to fix it with the facelift. Ford also supported the Nazis, Volkswagens, Diesel, and Monkey Gate. Volkswagen got caught with their pants down cheating emission standards, which weren't impossible to meet. They just didn't feel like spending money. Knox reducing system like Urea, for example, most commonly known as AdBlue. Basically, Volkswagen gassed the whole world with a completely unnecessary amount of NOx and made all diesels look bad. Not all diesels are dirty Volkswagens. And then to prove their innocence, they decided to run tests on monkeys, basically gassing monkeys with exhaust gas to prove that it isn't dangerous. Then they pretty much ruined biofuels for everyone by making cars with metal CNG tanks that would corrode which could make and make cars explode when refilling. Thanks to Volkswagen and the EU, we now have to have our Volvo V70 biofuels composite CNG tanks inspected for corrosion every year. Story 9, Google. Core part of the data industrial complex, founded with CIA money, whose main business model is spying on innocent people. There are bad food and drink companies, but it's not inherently wrong to be a food and drink company, whereas Google's business is immoral at its core. Story 10. Not a commercial company, but the Central Intelligence Agency is the most evil organization humanity has ever seen, overthrowing democratically elected governments, financing local groups to cause political instability, subverting the will of sovereign countries, all in the name of making sure the USA can install puppet governments. Most of the armed conflicts after World War II, CIA directly indirectly had a hand in it. Armed conflicts always affect poor people. One day they're living in a bad condition. Next day they're living in hellish conditions just because the evil CIA decided war has to happen in their countries because the military industrial complex needs to manufacture military hardware so shareholders get a good return on their investment. Story 11, Walgreens. They never have a sale unless it's to get rid of old merchandise and they jack up their frozen food by up to 200%, knowing that seniors who are in there to fill prescriptions will cave in rather than make an extra trip to the supermarket. They canceled my hemorrhoid medicine, which takes up about 5 inches of shelf space, in favor of a teddy bear with a foot and a half wide ass, and they'll fight you tooth and nail on return items. I never patronize them if at all possible. Story 12. Citadel Securities. They and their ilk have fleeced generations of people out of their wealth via high-frequency trading, dark pools, pump and dumps, and what could be called legal tax evasion, and so defrauded our very economy and nation. Their practices have invalidated securities trading on fundamentals and decoupled real-world value from derivative speculation. Their manipulation currently has a stranglehold on American investment. 
Story 13 Pfizer is definitely up there. $2.3 billion fine in 2009, the largest fine in human history. Constantly caught lying about the safety and effectiveness of their products, bribing doctors, lying about clinical studies results. Now they're holding the world's governments hostage, forcing them into binding contracts that only benefit them while at the expense of humanity. Truly disgusting story 14, U.S. medical insurance companies, Medicare and TRICARE coverage, but this applies to pretty well all of them. Do you need medicine to treat your disease? Well, it's too new and we don't think we like it. I don't care what the doc says, we won't approve it. Multi-thousand dollar surgery to fix the disease instead? One that will change your life forever and is really rough to go through? You go for it, champ. On a med that requires blood tests every couple months, sure. We won't cover one specific test, though. We don't think it's necessary. Nah, we don't care what the doc says. Meanwhile, that specific ordered test that they won't cover shows an abnormality due to that specific med. Med insurance can f*** off. What they cover and won't cover seems arbitrary and definitely doesn't seem to have any type of actual medical professional's hand in it at all. I'm lucky I don't have co-pays and though it sucks to have $150 come out of my already slim disability, it is relatively inexpensive. Other companies have really co-pays, and what they cover is even more slim and a pain in the ass. Some even require receipts uploaded to them before they will even cover things. Story 15 UNICEF If we're going to measure the badness of a company by outcomes and not intent, they are up there. In the 80s and 90s, they drilled thousands of wells in Southeast Asia to attempt to mitigate cholera and other waterborne microbes. They drilled down to a water table heavily contaminated with naturally occurring arsenic, Half of all people in Bangladesh have some level of arsenic poisoning. Story 16. Amazon has got to be the most evil. It uses technology and machine learning, artificial intelligence to undercut its workers. They determine the lowest salary and most work they can give using technology. I have been doing delivery for Amazon and the routes are horrendous. You don't know where you are going to be sent driving your own car. Most of these are very remote rural areas at 9, 10 p.m. where you can get shot or killed and they don't care because they make you sign as contractor and they won't be liable for anything. If you work for Amazon, you are not really working for Amazon. You are working for a subcontractor for Amazon, so you cannot sue them. Story 17 The world's most evil corporation changes pretty much every day as each one attempts to one-up the other. That said, there's a certain few who are always near the top on any given day, and they include but are not limited to Amazon for having a literal supervillain in charge and becoming the American sweatshop, the Correctional Corporation of America, yes, that's their real name, for having almost completely re-legalized slavery in the United States via our joke of a justice system, Big Oil, namely BP and Exxon Mobil, for causing some of the biggest environmental disasters in the last 50 years out of sheer negligence. Walmart, for holding an almost total monopoly on brick and mortar retail in the US and fighting at every opportunity to continue paying their employees peanuts for wages Facebook, for forming an information gathering network so vast that even the NSA uses it. Big media, namely Fox News and MSNBC, for becoming a propaganda machine the Soviets could have only dreamed of. But you want my honest opinion? The most evil corporation in the world is the United States of America itself. We are little more than an oligarchy in 2021, with corporate sharks running the show while decrepit and senile politicians squabble for their favor in Washington. Story 18, Monsanto. Nothing wrong with GMOs, but that company is evil. They drive their seed trucks with open tops so they fly into farmer's lands and then they come back and find their plant on the farmer's land. They then sue the farmer and take their land for their company. I think there is a documentary about how they ruin farmer family lives in many ways. Story 19. Disney. Surprise they haven't been mentioned yet, but Disney willfully set back decades of intellectual properties from entering the public domain in order to keep Mickey Mouse out of the hands of the public among other things, like bending the knee to China. LiveRamp, formerly Axiom, cyber company that collects hundreds of millions of data points about credit card transactions and web activity on billions of people across the globe in order to create and target ads. 
Story 20 PG&E, they caused multiple of the biggest fires in CA which have taken life and property. With years of record-breaking profits, executive bonuses, and other shenanigans, they neglected to put more than the bare minimum to keep up on their infrastructure. They were found guilty in a court of law killing people, and the only punishment is getting slapped with fines plus lawsuit payouts. No one has gone to jail over this, and they continue to pass these costs to the ratepayers for an issue they created with negligence. When PG&E filed for bankruptcy, CA again bailed them out instead of dissolving them into public utilities. Now ending another consecutive record-breaking fire season this year, I am not looking forward to what the next year brings, at least I will be reminded, nothing will be done to them paying my bill in January, seeing higher rates again. Story 21, The Catholic Church don't kid yourself, it's not an enterprise, a company owning, dictating, and using people as things to increase its wealth, breadth, and control, facing some problems, but not enough to ever challenge its power. Any organization without accountability falls under this umbrella. Probably most big score religions and cults, it's not about the individuals who believe or live according to their tenets, it's about control and money, just like any billion dollar company on earth. Story 22, Colonial Sugar Refining Company, CSR, operated mines at Wittenoom, Western Australia that produced asbestos, and despite warnings beginning in the early 1960s, they kept mining and allowed tours of the mines. Almost a third of the people who passed through Wittenoom during the mines' operating years would be diagnosed with a fatal disease, and yet they fought against closing the mines or paying any kind of settlement. As a multi-billion dollar company that was okay with killing its workers in order to make profits. Colonial Sugar Refining Company. Story 23. BlackRock Financial. Owns about 80% of everything, including majority stakes in most of the banks worldwide, and is behind almost all of the investment in the fossil fuel industry, as well as 90 out of the top 100 most polluting companies globally. Basically, they're the ones bankrolling the worst companies and oppressive political regimes worldwide because no one else will touch them and being evil, aka ignoring environmental laws and cutting deals with dictators for access to resources, is profitable. Story 24. I do agree that a lot of these things are wrong, immoral, and distasteful, gross. However, people still keep buying even when they know of said company. That's the most unfortunate part that even those on here commenting about this company or that product and how sucky they are, they'll still buy from them. The fact that the vast majority won't research anything they buy and still end up supporting it, all while shouting evil company from their podiums online and in their social circles, is concerning more than any of it. Most of these companies would not even exist, or at least they would exist to a far less degree than they do if they couldn't sell their much easier to look at the company and play a blame game while chewing on a banana from Chiquita, driving their car full of DuPont products, kayaking in their plastic kayaks made from big oil companies, take pain medications post-op from opioid crisis driving companies, and have numerous J&J &J products in their own homes. Nestle? That company is so rooted into your lives that if you pulled the thread, your entire life would be lacking many things, at almost every level. At some point, people need to stop asking the government to solve all of these problems, hasn't worked very efficiently thus far, and start actually implementing a change from within their own lives and homes. And no, I'm not talking about the stuff companies hide, but even just the stuff already known or in the open now. Story 25, easy answer, 10 cent, the Communist Party of China's corporate lapdog, the one that did this. Last week, TechCrunch reported that Reddit was raising $150 million from Chinese tech giant Tencent and up to $150 million more in a Series D that would value the company at $2.7 billion pre-money or $3 billion post-money. After no commenting on our scoop, today Reddit confirmed it has raised $300 million at $3 billion post-money with $150 million from Tencent. The deal makes for an odd pairing between one of the architects of China's great firewall of censorship and one of America's most lawless free speech forums. Some Redditors are already protesting the funding by trying to post content that would rile Chinese's internet watchdogs, like imagery from Tiananmen Square and Winnie the Pooh memes mocking Chinese President Xi Jinping's appearance. Story 26, any company using cobalt in their car batteries 
they've sold the sustainable Earth Mother persona to their customers who have more money and ego than brains. What they don't know is that cobalt is mined in Africa by children as young as four. The mines are so naturally toxic that kids can't live past a few years after being blinded, their lungs filled and failing from the particles, cancer, skin being eaten up, then there's rampant starvation, and they do this 16 hours a day. But hey, at least your carbon footprint is lower, right? Story 27, I'd have to say Avon, Unique, Arbonne, etc. The amount of people I've seen lose their life savings trying to become private contractors for these businesses is unreal. Their entire business model is making their employees into customers and forcing those customers to create new customers to sustain themselves. Plus, there's the whole thing where after like 20 or so laps, a perfectly successful MLM would have recruited like 20 billion people. It's entirely unsustainable for anyone at the bottom of the pyramid, but these companies don't care because they're making bank. Honorable mention would be Amazon. I worked there for a month and it made me more depressed than I ever was before or since, and they also sent me a fake item that I paid over 100 pounds for and refused to refund or return it. They're not as bad as MLM's IMO, but they definitely cause a huge amount of suffering and downright scam millions of people daily regardless. Story 28, Purdue, Sackler family. They basically made a large percent of the nation dope sick. Over half a million overdose deaths due to their pushing Oxy, paid for an FDA label that claimed Oxy was less addictive, but really it's more addictive, have impacted, pained, ruined families, friends, colleagues, institutions, all in the name of their greed. They basically have changed the landscape of addiction, pain meds for the worse, in America, and practically walked away from it all unscathed. Story 29. For me, it's a bank, any bank that will hound you and chase you and destroy you for the money you owe them but don't have right now. It's insignificant to them, but it might just pop you over the edge. Then they sell it to the debt collectors who use pretend mobile numbers to try and get you to pick it up. Five calls a day. Letters saying they are coming for you. Of course you owe them. Of course you have an obligation to pay it back. But the ease at which they will run you for a four-figure debt is simply disgusting. I'm not trying to escape what I owe. I'm genuinely trying not to do something silly while they hunt me down. Story 30 Chevron. They have absolutely no morals at all. If there's oil, they'll drill it. They've been trying very hard to drill in Antarctica and are currently using an island called Barrow Island as an example of how good to the environment they can be, like not dumping waste on the island, etc. It's still getting dumped, just not on that particular island, so that makes it okay. That is only one example. In all, they're just an evil, evil company. Story 31 Nike, they pay famous people to wear their and then charge 300% markups of what they're actually worth because they know they can get kids to buy them because their idols wear them. If their shoes were priced like Converse shoes, I wouldn't care. Sadly though, you could easily spend $400 on a pair of shoes that are less durable and versatile than a good pair of Vans I could get for like $75 tops. Story 32, the US Federal Reserve. It is a private company that has been given the authority to shadow tax all people who hold the US dollar at any time and with no accountability. You cannot even audit them if you wanted to. Only until recently their members were also able to buy and sell stocks and then proceed to pump up the stock market or just specific sectors with money they print at will. They are the reason most people can't even afford a house anymore. People are not even aware of just how much their lives are being ruined until they see the prices start going up, long after the printing is completed.